All right, guys, so here's my fat bike. The donor bike was a mongoose dolomite. It's like a hardtail mountain bike with fat tires that I got a couple years ago. I started out with the BBSHD 1000 watt mid-drive motor and I rode the bike around with that for about a year and it's working great. I love the BBSHD, it's a great motor, it's a great system. So in the second year that I was riding this bike, I put uh, dual motors on it, so it's got a rear hub back here. This is a Bafong G62 1000 watt nominal rear hub motor. And I've got that on 72 volts with a Frankenrunner controller, and that's pretty quick. So I, I actually built this, this wheel. I laced this hub motor into this rim and built this wheel. So now, I'm still rolling the original uh, front wheel that came on the Mongoose Dolomite originally. So it's got this goofy blue rim that was on the bike originally. And so I'm going to build a new front wheel with a hub motor, right? So we're going to have a front hub motor, BBSHD mid-drive, and the G62 rear hub motor. So we've got the things that we're going to need in a box over here. So over here we've got the motor, right here I've got the rim, and we've got some spokes. So let's dig in here. This just arrived the other day. We're digging in. Okay, so here is here's the torque arm that I'm going to use. So this is from Grin Technologies. It's their torque arm V3. It's their their torque arm for a front fork and a front hub motor. They've got the V4 is the torque arm that they have for rear motors that I used with my G62. So we've got this, it's gonna set that over there. And now we're gonna dig in here. So this is the rim. So when you order a rim from Grin Technologies, this is, this is kind of what you can expect. So we've got it in here. There's a little bit of uh, styrofoam around the edges where the rim is kind of touching the box so that is a nice touch so let's see it's like it's like christmas all over again guys all right so here's the rim wow so that that's pretty light actually pretty light so let's get this guy on bubble wrap all right so here's our rim I'm right here and I'm not sure if you can see that but it's a it's a Weinman so it's a 26 by 3.0 to four and a quarter so we can use tires on this rim that are between three inches wide and four and a quarter inches wide so that's the rim that we're going to use in this box right here you've got the spokes that i'm going to use so we've got a bunch of spoke nipples in here And then we've got our spokes. And so our rim has 36 holes. So I've got 18 spokes for the left side that are a certain length. And then I've got 18 spokes for the right side that are a different length. And then we've got some spare spokes in here just in case anything goes terribly wrong. So there's the spokes. So now, let's dig into the goodie box. So this is my old display that I'm gonna use for this setup. 
And then, so this is some wiring stuff that came with the motor that I don't plan on using. This is the motor kit that I got off of AliExpress. Was the only place that I could find one of these front hub motors. Uh, just a couple years ago, these front hub motors were like really popular and you'd see them on a lot of fat bikes. But then I, I think Buffong kind of like slowed down their front motor production or something because you just don't see them as much anymore. It's It's really hard to find a front G60 hub motor with the, this is 135 millimeter outer lock nut width. So that's the the spacing of the dropouts on a front fat bike is 135 millimeters across. So here's our motor. We'll pull this guy out. Okay, and then there's just some other bits and bobs in the box I'm gonna set aside. So then how I usually start out lacing these is I get something that's cylindrical and hollow that we can take our motor and I'm gonna put the cord kind of inside of there and then we're just gonna have it sitting just like this. And this is how we're gonna start out lacing the spokes into this thing. So we've got our spokes right here. Now I'm just using the uh, now I'm just using the Grin Technologies spoke calculator to double check my spoke lengths here just to make sure that everything looks good. So as you can see I've selected the Bafang G60 and then I've selected the rim that I'm using, this Wallman uh, or Weinman DHL65. And then I want to do a single cross with the elbows out. And as we can see right here, this is what our spoke lengths should be is. On the left side, it should be 203.6. On the right side, it should be 202.6. So I've got my spokes right here. So the 202.5 millimeter spokes are for the right side. I'm just going to put them over here so I remember. And then these are for the left side. All right, so those numbers check out. And so that's one of the most important things that you want to make sure is correct when you're building a hub motor and you're lacing the motor into the rim and doing all the spokes and stuff is you wanna make sure that your spokes are the correct length. And to do that, I would recommend using a tool like the Grin Technology Spoke Calculator just so you can make sure that the triangulation of your spokes and everything is going to be good and uh, basically so that your wheel is going to be solid and you don't run into any issues with it. So now that I've double checked that, we can get going. And so we're going to take our left side spokes and get the binder off of them. And we're doing a single cross basically. so. It's one of the more easy lacing patterns. So we're just going to get all of our spokes going in here. Actually, we got to do this the opposite way here. We got to come up like this. So I'm just going to keep lacing the rest of Get the rest of these spokes started in here and let the GoPro cool down for a second. 
I've got my 18 left side spokes into the hub. And so what we want to do now is take our rim, right? So we've got our first two spokes coming through the rim. I'm going to take a couple nipples. And we take our nipple. The end of the spoke is threaded. And the nipple is like the nut that we're going to screw on there. And how I'm going to start it out is I'm just going to screw the nipple on to the end of the thread. Just for starters. I'm going to do the same with that first one over here. Screw that on just to the thread. Alright. Eventually you might need a nipple driver. But you can start out just with your fingers. So this is the uh, the basic process. All right, so I got one side of the spokes laced into the wheel. They are all still quite loose. I haven't tensioned them at all. I just uh, I just fastened the nipple on to the end of the threads on the spoke and I'm just gonna weave them like that until we get all of the spokes in. So we've got the left side of the spokes done. Now we're gonna take our right hand side spokes. So now I'm going to start at the valve hole again, and we're not going to cross any spokes across the valve hole. We're going to start um, probably with these guys right here, these two, and we're going to cross them like this. I am going to have to get my nipple driver. So this is a nipple driver. It's kind of like this weird, it's got this thing on the end that fits into the, the nipple. And then you just kind of go like that to screw it in. So okay. All right, so we've got the first four spokes started out on that right side. I'm just gonna keep going around. All right, so we're down to the last two spokes here. All right, so we've got our spokes laced into the hub now. And we can see, we can see the beginnings of a wheel. A front wheel with a motor. So now it is time to get this thing in the truing stand and start tensioning the spokes. So we're definitely going to have to tighten the spokes on the left side a little bit more. Alright guys, so we've got the wheel in the truing stand. I've got the spoke nipples tightened up to the end of the threads. 
on each spoke so they're all tightened uh, somewhat evenly and we still have to tension them there's no tension yet but just to take a little look at it a little look-see As long as you tighten all the spokes to the end of the spoke threads, it should be somewhat straight and a good starting point for truing the wheel. So now what I'm going to do next is, I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but the, the rim needs to come this way just a little bit so that it's dished. So I'm going to start tightening the spokes on the left hand side. I'm going to start at the valve hole. I'm going to start at the valve hole and I'm going to tighten all of these left hand spokes going around the whole wheel. So I'm going to start doing that with my spoke wrench. And so something that's going to be important when you're tightening your spokes is you want to use the right size spoke wrench, especially if you're using like one of these multi-sized, multi-purpose spoke wrenches. You want to make sure that you're using the right size spoke wrench. And It's got to be the tightest, the tightest fit around the spoke where you can still fit it into the spoke wrench. So this is the zero, the zero. So we got to make sure we're using that zero. Uh, it seems like the tightest one. And what I'm going to do here, sometimes, personally, I I will accidentally start using the wrong spoke wrench, the wrong size, and that can strip out your nipples, and that's problematic. So I'm just going to put this little blue piece of tape on the size that I need to be using um, so that I don't get them mixed up. All right, so starting at the valve hole, I'm going to tighten all of the spokes on the left-hand side of the wheel. We're gonna tighten them two turns, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna spin the rim in the direction that the wheel should be spinning, so we can see this arrow right here on the motor. So I'm gonna go around the wheel, process, tightening the spokes in this direction starting from the valve hole. So we're gonna start right here, the first spoke on the left side. Come around here using the right size spoke wrench. And then you gotta kinda keep track of where you started uh, tightening, which, you know. And then so, to tighten this, we want, it's it's clockwise from this direction spinning the nipple. So when we're looking down through the holes in the rim at the nipple from the inside, it needs to go clockwise. So over here, don't get confused and start going counterclockwise. We wanna make sure that we go clockwise. So I'm gonna go, so there's one, And there's two. And then I'm going to go to the next one. There's one. There's two. Next one. One turn. Two turns. Right, we're just going to keep doing that.
And so what I want to do here is tighten these left hand side spokes until the rim appears uh, dished. So I'm using my dishing gauge here to take a reading on that left side. And then I'm going to bring it over to this right side to see where we're at. It might be kind of hard to see due to the perspective of the camera. I have it in linear lens mode, but if you look between the dropouts of the trimming stand, there's a lot more room over on that left hand side than the right hand side. So I'm going to keep tightening the spokes on the left hand side until the rim appears visibly centered between the you know what the dropouts would be so it needs to move like a good centimeter to the left still so i'm going to tighten the left spokes again two times each so it seems like by tightening this left hand side of spokes by another two turns we brought it about two millimeters this way all right so when i'm backing up and i'm looking at this rim still it's it still needs to go to the left a bit it's not quite centered yet so i'm going to continue tightening the spokes on the left hand side probably another Two turns, every spoke on the left hand side. Here we go. So I don't know if you guys can see the end of this dishing gauge. You see this metal thing on the end of that? That is supposed to line up with where the lock nuts are gonna go. So we got another probably like, uh, probably like four millimeters to go. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep tightening the spokes on the left side some more probably another two another two turns all right guys so now i'm gonna take a bit of a reading with the dishing gauge to see where we're at here so we put these we put these black things up against the rim and then you bring it down okay And it actually looks uh, fairly dished. It looks fairly dished right now. It looks pretty close. I could maybe bring it back this way just slightly. But at this point, it's basically just truing a wheel. What I'm going to do is probably come around the right-hand side, give each one just like uh, maybe like one twist. Might actually just do half a twist. because by tightening those left spokes, it also tightens the right spokes. All right, so the wheel appears to be, um, visibly dished for the most part 
the spokes are feeling pretty tight. You could probably ride it like this. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna go through and give each spoke like a quarter turn or something just to tighten them up a little bit more. But for the most part, uh, it's the wheel is true-ish and the spokes all have pretty good relative tension. Some of them feel slightly tighter than others, but for the most part, you could probably ride on this. I'm gonna go around and just do like a quarter of a turn on each spoke just to tighten up all of the spokes evenly so that my spoke tension overall is just slightly more. And then uh, it should be, and then we'll get the, uh, the rim strip on there and it should be good. So I'm just gonna go around and do one last adjustment to kind of tighten up all of the spokes. And I don't think that I'm gonna have to do a lot of truing. It seems like there's like a like a slight wobble, but really nothing. It looks like it's a couple, like two or three millimeters of wobble right now. So at this point, it's just kind of a matter of truing the wheel. Yeah, so if if you need to figure out how to true a wheel, you can always go watch the Park Tool YouTube channel. They have a lot of good tutorials on truing wheels and everything to do with bikes, really. Um, I'm not really like a wheel building, wheel truing master, so I'm not the best person to be giving tutorials on that type of thing, but... You kind of get the idea. We keep fiddling around with the spokes and spinning our wheel and looking at our truing gauge and making adjustments until it's as as little uh, lateral deviation as we can. And then we check the radial deviation just to make sure that uh, the wheel is a radial circle. And then after that, I'll double check the dishing just to make sure that the the rim is dish in between the dropouts. And I'll get my rim strip on there. And that's about it. All right, guys. So I've, I'm pretty much done with truing this wheel for today. I can always come back and tweak it later. But I just wanted to show you. So if you look right here at this gap in between the truing stand arm and the rim, and then I spin it, you can see that it's just wobbling like maybe one or two millimeters. Um, so that's kind of like fine tuning. I'm not too concerned about that right now. And then if we look over at the other side, There's one little, there's one little 
seam where they welded the rim that sometimes you can't do a whole lot about, but uh, you know, it's it's not perfectly true, but a couple millimeters to me is good enough. I'm gonna be, this is my bike, I'm gonna be riding this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect. So I'm gonna get the rim strip on there. All right guys, so there it is. We got the rim strip on there. All right guys, there we go. Hubs laced into the rim. Everything is looking good. Oh. So that's the basic process of lacing one of these G60 hub motors into a rim. I don't have the controller yet for this motor, so I'm not able to actually use the motor yet, but I've got the wheel ready to go. As soon as the controller gets here, I'm gonna try this thing out and we're gonna have a triple motor e-bike. Maybe go rip through the snow, see if you can do some front burnouts. So if you liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you like e-bike stuff, e-bike rides. Leave a comment. Let me know how you're feeling. What do you think about an e-bike with three motors? Because it's coming up soon. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.